Welcome back to This Week in Global Health, otherwise known as TWIG. TWIG is a weekly global health news roundup. In this week's episode, I've asked the team to send me snippets, and I'm going to edit them together, about what we've accomplished in the global health space. What are the positives? How have we gotten to where we have? What has the global health community managed to do that's really good? Okay, let's hear from the team. After 30 years and over $565 million of funding, 2015 has seen the development of the first ever malaria vaccine. With 50% of the world's population at risk and one infected child dying every minute in Africa, this breakthrough is set to transform millions of lives. And that is truly exciting. One of the big things that happened this year in the world of HIV was the WHO updating their guidelines for HIV treatment. Now they are saying that it should be universal. Everybody that is infected with HIV, regardless of CD4 count, as soon as they test positive for HIV, should be put on treatment. If a person is on HIV treatment they and their viral load is suppressed, they are less likely to transmit it to another person. Therefore, it's prevention at the population level. And so this is really important. WHO has gotten on board with this concept and they are backing it up. And that's how they've changed their guidelines. Happy New Year from Southern California. This is Terry Schmidt. For 2015, the global health achievement in my book is the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, placing the brakes on global warming. The agreement, the consensus of 196 parties, countries, becomes legally binding when signed by 55 countries in the next year. From a global health policy, law, and dip diplomacy perspective, this is a tremendous achievement that deserves our applause. One recent global health accomplishment is bariatric surgery, which is available via public health systems in countries like Australia and Britain. This is a controversial accomplishment, but it has been held as one of the major breakthroughs in diabetes care since the discovery of insulin. Bariatric surgery produces unrivaled health benefits that are life-changing for patients and cost-saving for government-funded health care systems. So one of the biggest global health stories of 2015, according to me, was the beginning of the end of the West African Ebola crisis. While optimism is still in the air, it is essential to remember that the ordeal is still far from over for the 17,000 Ebola survivors. I'd like to highlight another 2015 global success, and that is the elimination of polio from the African continent. Nigeria had the last known case of polio, and last September, the WHO announced that polio was no longer endemic in Nigeria. This means that there's only two countries left with polio, that's Afghanistan and Pakistan. This is a major global success, but also highlights the need to continue efforts to completely eradicate polio globally. 2015 has been a great year for global health. One of the things that contributed to this was the establishment of the Sustainable Development Goals. Compared to the Millennium Development Goals, the SDGs are more comprehensive, they're more inclusive of the countries involved, and they're financed in such a way to encourage sustainable development. Um, the Twig team actually did two videos on the SDGs, so be sure to check them out. Happy 2016! In 2015, the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine was awarded to researchers who identified novel therapies for parasitic diseases and malaria. This is a global health success because this not only highlights two discoveries that help millions of people every year, but also acknowledges the positive and extensive impact of research on global health. My global health success story is that in 2015, the number of people living in extreme poverty, that is on less than $1.90 a day, fell below 10% of the world population, or to about 700 million people. This is down from over 900 million people in 2012 and marks a significant milestone in our goal to end poverty by the year 2030. As part of the culmination of the Millennium Development Goals, the world can be proud of the fact that in 2015, maternal and childhood mortality rates dropped to an all-time low. Since 1990, childhood mortality rates have fallen by 54% to 5.9 million, and maternal mortality rates have fallen by 44%. This is a huge step forward for women and children worldwide. It's the arrival of the first pan-genotypic treatment regimen against hepatitis C, a virus that kills nearly 600,000 people worldwide each year, most of whom live in the developing world. An estimated 91% of the international community has now access 
to improve source of drinking water, breaking Millennium Development Goals targets of 88%. So congratulations to all of our efforts for improving the source of drinking water. Thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful. Remember to come back same time, same place next week. Until then, take care.